Well, beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. And also to you. You know, there's one great theme that stands out in our text for today, and that is the awesome and divine power of the Word of God. But also within our text this morning, we will see the great contrast between an almighty God and helpless man. Today's reading is found in the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through verse 11. If you are able, I would ask again that you rise out of respect for God's glorious truth. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gesenareth, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out from them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled the boat so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid, for now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. These are your holy words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in its truth. Your word is truth. Please be seated. Well, I think you can see that our text for day is not your average fish story. And while the text is very similar to our earlier gospel reading in Matthew 4 this morning, a careful reading of this text shows that Luke relates one event and Matthew and Mark another. And evidently an earlier one from another day or perhaps another hour of that same day. But either way, the events differ in their purpose and content. Luke begins by telling us that Jesus was by the lake of Gesenareth. He was preaching to many people. However, this particular setting was not the best environment for preaching because the text tells us that the crowd was massing in on Jesus as he was speaking, meaning it was uncomfortable for Jesus and not that all that conducive to good hearing. So Jesus remedies this situation by getting into a boat owned by Simon Peter and telling him to go out into the lake a little way away from the shore. You see, when Jesus did this, he was essentially using the boat as a pulpit because the natural acoustics of being on the water facing those on the land proved a very effective way to be heard. And what a thrill it must have been to hear the master speak. Wouldn't it have been awesome to have been there? To have your heart and your mind opened by the lips of Jesus. What would you be willing to do to be there with the master? To be there hearing his words, reaching into your soul. Would you give up all you had? Would you drop everything and go? Well, loved ones, you can hear Jesus today. You can hear his words of life penetrate your entire being. You can be thrilled and moved by the master's words because they are found in the pages of the New Testament. You just need to open your Bible to hear Jesus preach. 
Our text this morning tells us that after Jesus had finished teaching, he gave a command to Simon Peter. Luke 5, 4 reads, And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now, quite frankly, this must have seemed a strange or peculiar command to Peter. Why? Because Peter was a fisherman. This was his livelihood. This was his profession. What did Jesus know about fishing in contrast with an expert like Simon? And when Jesus told Simon to go out into the deep and let down the net for a catch, this was something that a seasoned fisherman wouldn't do, especially given that it was well into the day and the best fishing was done at night. And Jesus orders this of Peter while multitudes line the shore, many of whom were most likely familiar with fishing and would have certainly laughed at this and thought it silly for Peter to listen to Jesus and do something that was so against the rules of the experienced fishermen. And understanding all this must be realized to fully appreciate this command of Jesus. However, Peter, being Peter, let Jesus know that he had his doubts about what was being asked. Now, not so much in a way as if refusing Jesus, but in a way to make sure Jesus knows that he and his helpers had already been fishing in the best places and at night, and they experienced complete failure. Luke 5.5 5 reads, And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. Now Peter and his men had come back empty-handed after they had been working all night looking for fish. They were undoubtedly tired and were now washing their nets and probably just wanted to put their gear away. Yet Peter declares he will obey Jesus' word and let down the nets. Why? Well, because when Jesus spoke, Peter understood that he was simply to allow Jesus to command his will. Peter was to drop everything and throw himself unconditionally on the Lord's word alone. He was to go against his own experience. He was to go against his own reason and his own logic. He was to ignore the ridicule of the people on the shore for what they might say about such an irrational thing. Peter was simply to obey the word of Christ. Now this obedience of Peter is important for you and I to understand because it demonstrates a genuine faith in anything that Christ's word might say. And what happens here, it's set down as an example for us to follow so that in us, it might produce the same result. You see, it is the faith that is ruled by the Word and nothing but the Word that overcomes all weakness of belief because all spiritual weakness comes from not taking Jesus at His Word. Now in the text, we are not specifically told this, but it is obvious that when Christ preaches, things are going to happen. And it is obvious when the truth of God's word is preached from this pulpit, things are going to happen in life. Not because I am standing here, but because God is using me through his word and the word is powerful. My friends, God's word is the power that can change lives and has done so. It is the bread of life that has fed thousands and millions of people. And loved ones, this word of God is present right now. And it is as powerful as it was in the day of Christ. And it is still saying to us, 
listen to the words of God and get into the, his book and put out into the deep and let down your nets and catch some fish. Now what does that mean? That means that the word of God is going to show us the difference between man's weakness and Christ's power. Look what happened. Simon and his companions hadn't gotten one fish. Then Jesus says, launch out into the deep and let down your nets and catch some fish. In other words, Jesus said, do your work through me. He is saying, attempt great things with and for God and then expect great things in return from God that glorify him. Peter said, because of your word, I will do it. What word? The Bible as we know it today, the word of Christ as it was at that time. And my dear friends, this is what we should do as a congregation. We should recognize that we have no power in ourselves to do anything that is of any worth for the kingdom. But if we are willing to take God at his word, and we are willing to launch out into the depths of life, if we are willing to be real, bold, and daring, outgoing fishers of men, trusting in God's word alone, we will see genuine results. Shallow water is very dangerous for Christians. It's full of rocks. It's full of treachery. And no good fisher on the sea likes to be close to the shore. There are too many dangers. There are too many barriers for clear and smooth sailing. And this is the way it is to be with Christian life. We are to launch out into the deep. We are to trust in the power of God's word and dare to do bold things for God. Christ came upon these fishermen after they toiled all night with no luck. And when they had failed, his word said, try again. And here we have a classic example of Christ being able to change failure into victory. Jesus sent those men right back to the place where they had failed. And sometimes we don't like to, to try again after we've had no luck the first time. But Jesus told them to get out into the deep water. And this is another attitude that applies to the Christian. You see, my friends, what separates us for service to Christ is our willingness to launch out from the security of the shore and plunge into the deep, sharing God's word, the gospel. Loved ones, what are we doing for Jesus? What are you personally doing to grow his kingdom on earth? Most people in our world do very little for Christ in this life. Most people just live and die and leave nothing behind in the world to tell anyone that they were ever in God's service. What are we doing as a congregation? I think unfortunately that we spend a lot of time fiddling around on the shore, throwing rocks into the water, getting a splash now and then, but overall just putting one foot in the sea of life. My friends, if we don't launch out into the deep water of service for Jesus Christ, we are helpless to be his partner because Jesus can't use that kind of a person. If Peter had said, nothing doing, I'm not going out in that sea again, I'm washing my nets and I'm going home, I'm tired, I've got other things I want to do. Well, he never would have been the man he was. Christ expected Peter to drop everything else and throw himself absolutely on Christ's word alone. Peter was to understand that there is real power in the pure word of God. 
and that any deviation from God's word would not produce real fruit for the kingdom. And my dear friends, we too must understand this as well. You see, God's word is not some fish story that is meant to be changed. Any deviation from the truth of God's word means failure in kingdom work. Now, sure, we could follow other churches and modify and change things to fill the pews, but nothing saves souls except the Word of God. And that Word must be not altered or changed in any way. Because the divine and saving power of Christ lies in the pure Word of God and nothing else. At the word of Christ, Peter let down the nets and they had so much fish that they needed help to catch them all. Luke 5, 6, and 7 reads, And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so they began to sink. When the Lord gives, He gives abundantly. And His generosity is often overwhelming. These men obeyed the word of Jesus. And at once their nets were so full of fish that both boats began to sink. This, my friends, is the power of Christ's word. And loved ones, the, the Word of God always produces fruit. You are not going to be able to sit here and listen to this sermon without the Word of God penetrating your heart. Now whether you do anything about it, that's another question. But the Word of God is meant to produce fruit. And it produced so much that Peter and his crew couldn't handle it. They needed more help. Now this load of fish that they caught symbolizes in advance the abounding triumph of the gospel and its all-sufficient power to catch men. And this also shows us that Peter could not do the work of God alone. He must have help. He needed many other friends in Christ to do the work. And this too is a lesson for us. You see, loved ones, it is not the job of the pastor alone to reach out to the lost. It's the job of all who say that they are Christians. And that is why we together must be willing to serve God and lead others to Christ. And this is done through the sharing of truth found in his holy book, the Bible. You know, after all of these fish were taken out of the nets, and after all the work of bringing in this tremendous catch is completed, Peter sees what the Lord's Word has done, and within him an, a powerful and overwhelming reaction occurs. Peter realized the deity of Jesus in a way that completely overcame him. He fully recognized the difference between what he was and what Christ is. Peter saw his utter unworthiness before the holy presence of God. And Peter did something that you and I too must do daily. Peter, that proud and that tough, seasoned sailor, dropped to his knees in the midst of the fish before Jesus. Luke 5, 8 reads, But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Have you ever done that? Have you ever fallen to your knees before Christ? 
acknowledging your sinfulness and need of a Savior? What a refreshing stream of water will flow from a person's heart if they are willing to acknowledge the fact that they are a sinner in need of forgiveness. When Peter fell before the Christ, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, he saw how wretched he was. He saw his sins for what they were. And he saw that Christ made the difference. Because, loved ones, he always does. And that's what this text is all about, my friends. To capture us for Christ by letting us first see that we are going nowhere in life without the Master. We might sail a thousand ships, but we have no direction in life without Jesus. We can't set our own compass. We can only let Jesus into our hearts. And I urge everyone who hears my voice right now, either here or online, who does not know the God-man Jesus Christ as their Savior, to acknowledge your sinfulness, let Christ take over in your lives, and be commissioned in His service. Now notice that the admission of Peter's sin and helplessness led to God's commission, because it always does. You see, God can't use the self-righteous, but he can use sinners like you and me. Jesus said to Peter, stop being afraid, Peter. Your real job isn't going to be to catch fish in the sea. Your real job is to catch mortal men for the kingdom of God. Now what does that mean to you today? Well, it means this. There isn't one of you who has a job that you are doing that doesn't have a greater job waiting for you. The job of inviting people into the kingdom. Loved ones, if you know anything at all about Christianity, you have to know that you and I are commissioned as Christians to go out and bring people the message of salvation. It's the Great Commission to go out and bring them in to be taught so they can go out and bring them others in to be taught. It's the Great Commission. That's Christianity. That's what the Word of God says. Our text ends by saying that Peter, James, and John brought their boats to shore and left everything and follow Jesus. Does that mean that you are being called into the ministry? Not necessarily. But it does mean that you are called and are commissioned by the Lord Jesus Christ in whatever setting life has placed you in. If you say you are a Christian, no matter where your occupation takes you, your life is to be used for Jesus Christ and bringing men into the kingdom of God. And unless you see life for what it is supposed to be, a life lived for Christ, your life will be lived in vain. My friends, none of us will ever find eternal life apart from Christ's call to the gospel. And the first condition of that call is to get on your knees and get right with the Lord Jesus because it is He alone that offers forgiveness of sins, peace with God, and the salvation to everlasting life. Loved ones, let's be willing, as a people of this church and as Christians, wherever we are, to let Christ push us out further from land to get in over our heads in the work we do for Him and to be commissioned for dedicated service to God, bringing others into His kingdom. Let us endeavor in this congregation to launch out in a program of evangelism that will overflow this church. 
Now I'm sure that some who hear this message will just sit and piddle around on the shore throwing stones into the shallow sea. But I challenge you and I challenge whoever hears the powerful voice of God today to take the message of this sermon with you and let Jesus push you out into the deep sea to discover what a blessed calling it is to catch men alive. May God help each one of us to be true servants of leading souls into his glorious kingdom. Glorious Heavenly Father, open our hearts and our minds to your word today, Father. Let the light of Jesus and his word shine within our hearts so that we become fishers of men. Let each one of us who hear this message today change their entire direction of life to lead others to you and your son for what he did for me on the cross. In his name we pray. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Thank you.